guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Majora's Mask. We finally removed the curse that the Skull Kid has placed upon us, and we can now use it to transform at will. We've gotten a new objective, so let's head back out into Clock Town and get things started once again. So like I said, Tattle's gonna sort of give us a rundown. That mask, the Skull Kid uses the power of that mask to do those terrible things. Well, whatever it takes, we gotta do something about it. The swamp, mountains, ocean, and canyon the tail was trying to tell us about. I bet he was referring to the four areas just outside town. There's one in each compass direction. But what do you suppose he meant by the four who are there? I have no idea. He always skips important stuff. I guess we should just go and find out. If we go through that gate straight ahead, we'll be heading in the direction of the swamp. Yeah, so remember, Tail told us about the four who are there that we need to uh, go get, apparently. So that's really the main overall objective of this entire game, really. So um, that's what we're going to be doing for a long while. But now that we're highly in Link, there is a bunch of side stuff that we can be doing. I'm actually going to uh, bring the flow of time back to normal. I didn't mention it before, but anytime you want to do that, um, you can just switch between slow and normal time by playing the inverted song of time. As you can see, it'll ask to revert to normal. So we can do that, because there's actually um, a few side quests that we can only do at later periods in the day, so I kind of want to just get time moving a little bit. First thing we want to check out is over here to the left, so we can check this thing here if we check it. Ye who hold the sacred sword, leave proof of our encounter. Um, okay, well, let's hit it. So when we do that, it opens up, and we can now use this. It'll explain what's uh, going on here. You can save your progress and quit here. When you reselect your file, my face will appear by your file name. This indicates that the next time you reopen your file, you'll resume playing at this very place and time with your current status. If you reopen this owl file and then reset without saving, you'll lose the progress you saved here. Next time you open the file, you'll restart at day one with the status you have when you last saved using the Song of Time. So yeah, this sort of explains one of the major downfalls of this game. In Ocarina of Time, previously you could just press start and then press B and it would ask you to save. You could do it anywhere, anytime, no matter, you know, what the circumstances. In this game, you can always save by playing the Song of Time or talking to one of these things. Talking to one of these things creates a temporary save file um, that will be erased once you load it up again. So you can't really use that as sort of a hard backup save. The only time you can do that is by playing the Song of Time. So. Saving your progress is a little overly complicated, if you ask me, but, uh, well, that's just how it works. You learn to get used to it. It's really not that big of a deal, um, so we'll be all right, but anyway, we need to do a lot of side things around Clock Town now. Like I said, there are plenty of little mini games we can play and pieces of heart and masks we can get. First thing we're going to do, though, is uh, take up the Great Fairy's little uh, advice she told us before. Remember, once we get our form back, we should go back and see her. Well, uh, we have to get our form back again, of course, since time has been reset. All that we did has now been undone. So, uh, we got to get the Stray Fairy again and then head all the way back up to North Clock Town. Let's go ahead and take off the mask. I I've been decooling for too long now. I like running around this Hylian Lake again. Alright, so we need to head back up to North Clock Town, pass by the Owl Statue. These guys also will have another use later, but um, that's just best explained for once we find that out. Alright, so let's head back up here and go into the cave where the Great Fairy is. And put her back together once again. Oh, Tattle, and you, kind young one. Thank you for returning my broken and shattered body to normal. I am the Great Fairy of Magic. For now, this is all I can offer you. Allow me to ease your weariness as a token of my gratitude. And, of course, she'll heal us up. Oh, kind young one. Scattered throughout the four temples of this land are broken stray fairies like me. Please find a way to save them and return them to their fountains. Surely they will add to your strength. Allow me to grant you something good so that the stray fairies will not fear you. And we get our second mask, the Great Fairy Mask, where it would see stray fairies will fly to you when you wear it. You'll know you're close to a fairy who's lost in a temple if the mask's hair begins to shimmer. Come see me whenever your quest has made you weary. 
Oh man, I gotta make a whole new list. All the ones back in Ocarina of Time I don't have to go see anymore. Well, <laughs> that's weird. But anyway, we've now picked up the Great Fairy Mask. Um, we can check it out here. And apart from making Link look really ridiculous. Look at this crap. Oh, man. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, that will help us collect these stray fairies that are in each of the temples we're going to go to. There are, uh, I might as well go ahead and explain this now. There are 15, I believe, stray fairies in each of the temples. And uh, once you collect all of them, you can go back out to a fairy's fountain near the temple, put them all together, and the great fairy there will grant you a new power. So we're, of course, going to be doing that, and the great fairy's mask helps out by not only telling you where fairies are, but it will also draw the fairies to you if they're, like, a long way away from you so you're going to be using that mask a lot inside of dungeons but outside of them they have literally no use and so we're just going to put the deco mask back on okay so now what we actually need to do um, which is kind of annoying and you're going to be doing this a lot throughout the game is we're going to have to go through the process of getting the uh, moon's tier again so what I'm going to do is actually head into East Clock Town. I don't know why I went into the South one. I just wasn't paying attention I guess and we are going to go back to the bomber's hideout. Now, this is where you might forget what the code is, and honestly, I'm not sure if I remember mine. Um, so let's try something. Okay, I had to uh, go back through and try to remember what the code is, because I kind of forgot. But there you go, it's the same as it was the first time you found it, so um, here we get our correct speech. Now we can head into the bomber's hideout without having to find the kids again, which is really nice. So um, now we can head on in and actually head here as a, uh, as a human, as highly unlike. So we're going to pretty much follow the same process. Um, so let's get back on the Deku Link and head back there. Like I said, you're going to be doing this quite a few times actually throughout the game, so get used to doing this little sequence. Um, I'll probably speed most of it up or, you know, cut most of it out or whatever so we don't have to uh, keep watching this like so many times over and over. And now I'm pretty much almost there, so I guess we can, uh, well, I don't know. We'll, I'll, I'll do something and make this take not so much time. Alright, so we got the moon's tier, as you can see, I just went ahead and cut out the rest of it out, because we've seen it all before, literally the exact same things happen. So let's take off the mask and become Hylian Link once again. Make sure that you walk out if you're as Hylian Link. And uh, once we do that, we can head back up the slope, and we'll soon be stopped by Jim here. Hey guy, you haven't passed my test, so how do you know my secret code? Nobody but bombers know that code, so why do you know it? Listen guy, you're pretty good. You managed to figure out a code that only we know. Now that's something. I like you. What's your name, guy? Link, huh? Alright, that skull kid broke our rules and is doing all kinds of stuff. I'm making Link a new member of the Bombers instead. This is the Bombers Notebook. It contains the words we live by. Read it over. And here we get a pretty important item. This is the Bombers Notebook. It allows you to keep track of people's schedules. And, uh, yeah, we can access it through the quest status screen. 1. Find troubled people and add their names and pictures. Only 20 people will fit in your book. 2. Promise to help them. Mark promises with promise stickers. Never be late with fulfilling your promises. 3. Whenever you solve someone's problem, it makes you happy, so a happy sticker will be added to your book. 4. No removing stickers. Use promise stickers to keep track of people until everyone is happy. Don't forget the rules. Tattle, you tell that skull kid he's out of here. He's been acting like a real jerk lately. Okay, so now we have the Bomber's Notebook. At any time we get an entry added, this will happen. The Bomber's Secret Society of Justice was added to your notebook. And you were taught the secret code. This is added to your notebook. So he's going to run off like some kind of weird thing that waves its arms around. I don't know. But <laughs> he runs off in a very strange pattern. And now we can check out the quest status subscreen and see our Bomber's Notebook, which takes up this spot up here in the top left. So let's check it out. And you can see it's uh, kind of organized by grid patterns, so to speak, here. Uh, we've got different times during the day. Um, as you can see, um, he pretty much, you can do it at any time. That's why the blue bars take up all of them. And since we have this little present icon over at the right, that means we've pretty much finished their track. So uh, we got the Bomber's Notebook and everything. And you can also see the code here again if you ever forget it. So um, that'll work. But there's also a whole bunch of different spaces for a whole bunch of different people we're going to be meeting. And that kind of allows you to keep track of your side quests. So um, that's actually a pretty important item. But... Okay, so now that we've taken care of that, um, if I see somebody running around that will get added to the book, we'll go ahead and do that. But we're, we're going to do that in just a little bit anyway, so, you know, if we don't, it's no real big deal. So let's head back to South Clock Town. Now that we have the Moon's Tier, um, I'm going to talk to this guy again. Again. 
Okay, so he goes and flies off, and as you can see, we've got the deed. But this time, we're actually going to be using it for something a little bit different. You'll see once we get to it. But um, now we can pretty much start the side questing, really. Um, there's going to be a lot of things we're going to be picking up, a lot of pieces of heart, a lot of masks also. Um, there are so many side things you can do before we even set foot outside of Clocktown. So that's what we're going to be doing for just a little while. Um, first off, I want to sort of check out this part of town. There are a couple of buildings right here. This one here, if we can check this, is the post office, which we're going to be getting to in a little bit. We need to actually enter there um, after 3 p.m. So, as you can see, it's not quite there yet. Just a couple more hours, though. And uh, this building right over here is... Oh, yeah, I see the postman running out. You can also recognize this guy as the running man from Ocarina of Time. So, there you go. Um, but let's check this one if we can. I don't know if we actually can or not. Oh, we have to check this. Uh, this is Inner All Disciples and Those Who Choose to Be Enlightened with the Way of the Sword, Mighty Training Center. So yeah, that's kind of like a sword training center. There's something we can get there, but before we do that, we're going to head back to the bank. Um, and this also brings into uh, account what this bank is actually used for. As you can see, we actually have zero Deku Nuts, even though we've never used one. All your uh, things that sort of have counts next to them get uh, taken away whenever you reset time. And that includes your rupees, so you want to deposit them in the bank. Uh, because this guy can check you out, and as you can see, we can now withdraw rupees. I'll take a look at us and somehow magically remember that we deposited 53 rupees. I don't know if this guy's like immune to the flow of time or something. So we can now take out all our money, and uh, you know, that'll let us keep our money in between time cycles. So um, that's very, very important. Anytime you're about to reset time, make sure you deposit your money if you want to keep it. So. All right, now let's head into the sword training center. By the time we get done with this, it might be three o'clock, so we can uh, do the post office right after that. Um, so let's go ahead and talk to this guy again. This is the guy from Ocarina of Time who runs the uh, the shop in the haunted wasteland. So you may not have seen him in that game, but he's here now. This training center has friendly, polite, 24-hour one-on-one training that will noticeably improve your sword skills. From now until the end of the carnival, join in a special discount. So will you try it? So we have two courses here, the Novice and the Expert. You want to take the Expert course to get a reward. The Expert course is a practice session. Cut down the 10 logs using the highly difficult techniques. If you score a perfect 30 points, you shall be taught all the secrets. Have you prepared? So basically, all you need to do here is destroy each of the logs that come up using a jump attack. Now, these logs only stay up for a limited amount of time, so make sure you hit on your first strike. Um, it's okay to take a little bit of extra time to make sure Link lines himself up. Um, because if you miss the first time, then chances are the log will go back into the ground before you can actually hit it. And you have to hit all of them to get the perfect score and the reward. So, just keep that in mind. Um, let's see, we need to hit this one. Wow, that was really close. He just turned, like, at the last second. Alright, so just one more round. And there we go. Perfect 30 points. Hmm, impressive. I must give you something. Here. And we get a piece of heart for it, so we've collected two pieces so far. Unbelievable. Cherish it well. Awesome, so we're now done with that. And as you can see, it's oh so um, conveniently turned 3 o'clock. So let's head back into the post office now. And uh, you can see the postman will be sitting here on his bed, training, or something. Let's go ahead and talk to him. Four, five, six. Wow, you startled me. Do not disrupt my training. In my mind, I am running for exactly ten seconds without looking at a clock. I was in the middle of mental training. You may make fun of me, but this is quite difficult. Will you try? So what this is here is kind of a little mini game that we're going to see. Um, you can do it now. It's a lot easier, actually, if you do it later after you get a certain mask. We're going to go ahead and try it now. Press A to start. Count ten seconds. In the precise moment you think you've hit ten on the dot, press A again. So here we're going to start. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten on the dot. Look at that very first try. Oh my goodness. Huh? Ten seconds. That is amazing. You have reflexes suitable for a postman. As thanks for showing me something impressive, I will give you this. And we get a heart piece. And we got it for free, too, which is actually... I've never, ever done that on the first try. I can't be like this. I have to train more. More. So now we're going to add him to our uh, little bomber notebook. You showed your wild instincts, this was added to your notebook, and the postman was added to our notebook. So now if we want, we can check that out and sort of see how his entry works. Um, let's look at it. 
he's going to be down here, um, and you can see we have very limited amount of time that we can actually do it. That's kind of what these blue bars mean. So when you find someone, it's a good idea to check out their notebook entry so you can actually sort of uh, see, you know, when you need to meet them at. So that can make doing this a whole lot easier, but... There we go, we got a piece of heart, so we're up to three now. And uh, we're just about at 15 minutes, so it's it's almost time to sort of cut this off. And the next thing that we need to do, actually, we're gonna have to wait until uh, nighttime to do it, so. Uh, I think this looks like a pretty good place to stop. We're also conveniently right next to an owl statue, so I can sort of make a little temporary save here. Um, so let's go ahead and check this guy, and we'll save and quit, and we can kind of see how that works. Um, so let's save our progress up to this point and quit playing, yes. So as you can see, it's automatically going to back us out back to the title screen. And whenever we look at our save file, there's a little owl to the right. That kind of means that it's a temporary save, like I mentioned before. So um, if you want, though, I think you should be able to just copy it over. And that'll sort of work as a hard save if you've got the second file open. So, you know, that way if you mess up on one, you can just go back and reload the other one. But um, anyway, I think I'm going to stop the video right here, you know, since we're at the title screen and not doing anything. So um, next time we are going to do a whole lot of more side stuff around Clock Town. And then eventually we're going to head out in towards our next destination. So um, that should be pretty fun. You're going to be seeing um, a lot of Clock Town for the next few videos. But um, hopefully it'll, it'll be fun. The mini games are kind of cool. So... Uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.